Hey guys, I know it's been a while since my last video, but I'm pretty excited about this one. I'm up here in my attic where I've recently installed this Arduino controlled attic fan. And to be right up front, this entire project costs less than my August air conditioning bill. In this video, I'll explain why installing an attic fan such as this one could potentially save you money in the long run and why controlling the attic fan with an Arduino and temperature sensors instead of the built-in thermostat is a much, much better idea. In a previous video, I demonstrated how to control DC fans using an Arduino. In that video, I mentioned that in a future video, I would be showing how to control an AC fan using an Arduino as well. Well, the day has finally arrived. The fan I selected for my attic is this Brone 353F model, which is capable of delivering between 760 and 1020 cubic feet per minute. I'll leave a link for this fan as well as all the major components that I use in this video in the description below. Now there are many critics on the internet that claim that attic fans aren't all what they're cracked up to be. They claim that they are just pulling air from inside your house to cool the attic. Well in order to avoid that there are two considerations that need to be made. The first is that you want to select a fan that is capable of exchanging the air in your attic between six and eight times per hour. Some people assume that a bigger fan is always better, but that is absolutely not the case when it comes to attic fans. The second consideration is to make sure that you have plenty of surface area for fresh air to come in. Now this is the gable vent where I will be attaching the attic fan. Fresh air will be able to come in through this gable vent, this gable vent, and this gable vent. If you have vented soffit, this is another great way for air to enter your attic. So if you decide to do a project like this, make sure that you size the fan correctly and make sure there is plenty of surface area for fresh air to be drawn into your attic. I plan on developing the code using an Arduino Uno, but once the code is ready, I will be flashing it over to this Arduino Nano, which is much smaller, and I'll be using this breakout board. That way, if I ever do decide to change the software, I can remove the Arduino and reflash it without having to disconnect any of the cables. Because I will be controlling an AC fan using an Arduino, I will need some sort of relay. And at first I considered these very inexpensive relays from China. But I quickly had the realization that this is my house we were talking about, and I didn't want to put the safety of my house in the hands of a $1 eBay component. I decided instead to use this Functional Devices Home Automation Relay that is UL listed and made in the United States. And it didn't end up costing that much money either. As you can see inside, it's got a very hefty relay, and the DC and AC side are completely isolated. So I disconnect the Arduino to these two terminals here, the power and fan to these wires here, and we'll be in business. For temperature sensing, I'll be using three of these DS18B20 temperature sensors. Using some inexpensive telephone wire, I will be able to put one sensor outside the house, one inside the house, and one up high in the attic. These sensors will allow the Arduino to make smart decisions on when to turn on and off the attic fan. In order to keep things simple, I decided to use a Nextian touchscreen to interface with the Arduino. These screens come in a variety of sizes and can be purchased with or without GPIO pins. Since I plan on having the Arduino do most of the legwork, I decided a basic 2.8 inch display would be perfect for this project. The Nextian uses serial communication with the Arduino, which keeps the wiring down to a minimum. The free software is very easy to use and allows you to add text, images, and buttons to your pages in your project. The editing software also contains a simulator, which helps you ensure that the proper serial commands are being sent to the Arduino. Now even though the Nextian is programmable, I decided to keep most of the software on the Arduino. I also decided not to use the Nextian library in Arduino. Now because the code for this project is a bit more involved than previous projects, I decided to cover the code for both the Nextgen and the Arduino in the next video. Now, I needed a way to mount this on the wall in my house, and Nextgen's website actually had this front plate that uh, the 3D file was available. I was able to download it and print it, and it looks like it worked pretty good, except that it really didn't allow me any way to mount this to the wall. So I took this piece here and I ended up making my own using the same basic dimensions. And as you can see, uh, it fits pretty nicely there. And uh, one of the good things is that I will be able to use a screw and have it mount and hang on the wall. 
Now, as you can see with most 3D printed parts, the surface finish isn't always the best. And where this is going in my house, I want it to look nice. So I'm going to be uh, sanding this down first of all, and then spraying it with this sandable filler, and then uh, resanding again with finer grit, and then finally hitting it with some flat black spray paint. So here it is a few days later, as you can see, it looks a lot smoother than when it came out of the 3D printer. Now let me take you back a few weeks ago to what motivated me to do this project in the first place. Okay, so it is quite hot today. About 99 degrees outside Fahrenheit, which is about 37.2 Celsius. And my air conditioner has been running all day long. Here inside the house, it's about 74 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 22 Celsius. Now, even though my house is well insulated, there is a lot of surface area of my ceiling. So even a small temperature differential between the attic and the rest of the house can amount in significant heat transfer. Okay, so here I'm taking a few uh, temperature readings of my ceiling. As you can see, it is a little bit hotter than the house in different areas. But I want you to pay particular attention to this wall here, which touches the attic. And if we go up to this top corner here, you're gonna see that it's 106 degrees on the inner surface of my house. And here's a sample of the attic. As you can see, 136 degrees, which is about 58 Celsius. Pretty dang hot. Now consider that it's seven o'clock at night. Think how hot that attic was four or five hours ago when the sun was coming straight down on top of it. Let me explain why this Arduino controlled attic fan will work better than one controlled by thermostat. And before I get started, a special thanks out to my 11 year old son who helped me put this animation together in Scratch. Overnight, your attic will cool off, but once that sun comes up, it'll start to warm up. In fact, it can get really hot. During the day, heat from your attic transfers into your house. Now, yes, we do add insulation, which reduces that heat transfer, but nonetheless, the heat transfers from higher temperature to lower temperature. Now we have our air conditioner, which hopefully is extracting that heat at the same rate that is coming in. Now if we add an attic fan, we can pull air in from the outside, which will in theory reduce the attic temperature and therefore reduce the amount of heat transfer going into the house. Now at night, we can draw even cooler air into the attic Whereas if a fan were on a thermostat, it might shut off. Our Arduino fan will know that it makes sense to continue to bring that attic temperature down. Now it is possible then that we can reduce the attic temperature below the temperature of the house and therefore pull some heat from the house into the attic and extract it to the atmosphere. Now in the winter, when we're trying to keep the house warm, it makes sense to turn the fan off so that the attic can heat up as much as possible. So we'll make a mode in the Arduino that will know that it's winter and it will disable the fan. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm not going to use this thermostat at all. So I'm simply going to take it out and disconnect it. And I will connect my line in neutral here and the ground here. So over here is where I'm going to mount the fan. As you can see, I'm going to need to put some framing up in order to mount the fan. You can also see that they used the wrong uh, screen insert here and it's blocking most of the louvers. If you can see over here on the other side, let me zoom in, uh, they did this one right where it has much more opening. I'm gonna cut some of this siding out over here. I'm gonna pull this screen out and put in a new screen so that we can maximize our airflow. As you can see, trimming back the siding really opened it up. Next, I'll probably take a jigsaw and cut these little pieces out so they're not blocking either. Okay, now I've built a little box to mount this once we get up in the attic. I thought it would be a lot easier to build down here. I just wanted to show that uh, even though there's going to be a sheet of plywood over this, I put some blocks because I wanted the screws to sink into something solid. I'm also using my pocket hole jig to put three pocket holes on each side. That way I can preload the screws and make installation easier once I get up in the attic. I've attached the OSB to the box, and before I did that, I cut this hole out using a jigsaw. I did cut it slightly larger than the fan, so there will be a little gap, and I will seal that with some tape. 
I think I'm going to pre-drill some mounting holes before I take this up and take these two up separately so that it's not so much weight when I try to install it in the attic. Now let's talk about the cables and wiring. Because this is a 110 volt system, we have our line neutral and ground. I'm going to install a light switch that will disable the entire system. Just down from the light switch, I will have a 110 volt outlet in which the power supply for the Arduino, Nextgen, and the three temperature sensors will be connected. The fan will also be powered by 110 volts, but it will get its power through the relay module, which is also 110 volt powered, and uh, will be controlled by output pin 13 on the Arduino. As I mentioned earlier, the Nextgen touchscreen control, the Arduino, and the three temperature sensors will all share the same 5 volt power supply. You will notice that uh, because I'm using the one wire library for the DS18B20 temperature sensors, that all three are connected to Arduino pin 7 using a 4.7K pull up resistor to the 5 volt rail. Be sure to connect TX on the Nexian display to RX on the Arduino and TX on the Arduino to RX on the Nexian display. So here's the fan completely installed. As you can see, I went pretty crazy with the tape around the edges. I want to maximize the flow going out. Over here, if we follow the power line, we go to the relay. I'll move over there so you can see better. Here's the relay box, which is connected to this power box. I stole the power from this light right here. And I put it on a switch. This uh, power supply is for the Arduino. This will turn the entire system off. This cable here in the relay box is the digital output from the Arduino, which is enclosed in this outlet box. Up here we have our attic temperature sensor in the air, clear across. Out the uh, front of the house we have the outside temperature, and these wires coming down into the wall are for the interior temperature and for the next tune display. The Arduino will compare the outside temperature to the attic temperature to determine when it's smart to turn the attic fan on. So if we trick out the attic temperature, make it think it's hotter in here, the fan should turn on. I did run a little experiment to test out the fan. Now while no two days are exactly the same with cloud cover and temperature, I tried to find two days that were pretty similar in forecast. These numbers on the left represent the temperature difference between the attic and the outside temperature. These at the bottom are one for every hour between 10 o'clock and 7 p.m. The fan did keep the attic a bit cooler, and I'm hoping this eventually leads into some energy savings and prolongs the life of my air conditioner. Now, since the hottest days of summer have already passed, I'm anxious to run this test again next summer when it gets back into the hundreds. If you would like to learn how easy it is to control your Arduino code using a Nextian touchscreen display, be sure to check out part two of this video tutorial. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and turning on those notifications so that I can bring you more content like this in the future. Once again, thanks for watching!